Here, I can hop on Instagram and see. I'll switch headphones. Say something, Mario. Hello, hello, this is Mario. Do it again. Hello, hello, this is Mario. You're a little low, but I think it might work as long as everyone else. Shit, I can do Agrees. one. Does that sound weird? Say something. Oh, uh, testing, testing. Oh yeah, that's oh, weird. Brandon's here. I have one and one and one and the other. It's like a sweet, weird delay in my ears. <laughs> Yeah, I don't get confused. All right. Hello, everyone. All right. So, uh, talking to Melinda. A little quiet, Mario, but I got no background sound. All right. I will talk louder. Um, sorry. I don't know. I can't adjust my levels more than I have them already. So. Well, you guys can uh, go on YouTube, right? Maybe they can yeah, go on you, YouTube, too. You can definitely go on YouTube. Uh, you will hear my voice a little bit louder there. Uh, we are live. Let me drop that uh, in the chat on Instagram. How am I going to do that? All right. Hey, Melinda, you had a you had a really sneaky way to like get these things off of live. I do. I do. I There's an extension in Chrome that if you you get the extension and then you go on Instagram, you can download the Instagram lives, but it comes down as uh, audio and video separate. So you have to stitch it together later, but no it works. Yeah. Hey, guys. Nice to see some familiar faces. Brandon, yeah, we're on we're on YouTube. What was that, Mario? Downloader for Instagram. Do you remember what it was? Um, you can do it after. So when it's when it's up, I can email it to you. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's see. Let me I'm gonna drop this in real quick. I will be right back, everyone. Hey guys, welcome. There's a link. Brandon Grace, what's up? Man, Melinda brings out all the heavy hitters. <laughs> this is our YouTube link, everyone. If you care to watch on YouTube, we're a little bit, probably levels are probably a little bit better. You can ask questions there too. The chat is live. Um, Ooh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can't move my computer. All right. Let me see. Okay. I have 15 screens. Uh, trying to get mine to not fall over. Okay, I think I'm good. All right. Oh, audio is better now. Oh, sweet. Okay, cool. Um, like we said, um, or like I kind of just announced that, well, this is, I know it was impromptu, but can't can't give you guys too much notice on these things because I want to keep you surprised. Um, Melinda is here with us today. Super excited to have her with us. She's a brand strategist and also now kind of pivoting towards um, teaching others how to do brand strategy, which is her her main her main focus now, which is exciting. Um, Melinda and I have met a long time ago, but we actually officially only met a little while ago, a couple almost a month ago or so, uh, which was great because it felt like we were already friends. Um, so Melinda, I would love for you to just give us a, give us a little bit of uh, background and kind of tell us about you and, and what you're up to and what you've been up to. Yeah, yeah. Should I look at, where should I look? Zoom? Let's do, or let's do Zoom. Instagram is okay. kind of weird. I know. I'm going to try Sorry. to put Instagram right in front of me. Let's see if it stays. Uh, yeah, so I'm Melinda Livesey, like Mario said. Um, I used to be a graphic designer. Man, I'm just going to hold this thing. 
Okay. So <laughs> I used to be a graphic designer. Uh, that's what I, I studied graphic design illustration in school. And then years later I met Chris Doe. That's how Mario and I knew each other, We're both in the future pro group. And, uh, Ever since I met Chris, uh, my business has changed. I transferred into being a brand strategist, and then I'm now helping others do the same transition or change from graphic designer, order taker to brand strategist and more of a consultant role. So that's really what I'm doing now. Higher. Oh, <laughs> Brandon's gotta, like, look everywhere. I know, right? Gotta, Roxy. I gotta, um, take, uh, take a picture of this makeshift setup that I have here. Um, well, that's awesome. Um, tell, tell me a little bit about like the beginning. Like you say you met Chris and kind of, he, as he does, flipped your world upside down mm -hmm. um, in a, a right setup, I guess, um, in a good way. How, um, what was that process like? How did you guys meet? What was the, what was the, you know, what was the intro there? And then why did he start kind of coaching you? Yeah, it's a late, it's a funny story. It was three years ago and I was doing brand identity and I had my own business and I was hitting a wall. And I just, I wanted to grow, but I didn't know how. And so my instinct was just do better work. So I was working on logos, brand identity and all that. And so I figured, well, I'll just get better at logos. And during that time, um, I was teaching some online classes as well. I had an e-course out and had a freelance. And one of my beta students had posted in our group about Chris and said, hey, this guy is teaching how to price a logo, but I still don't get it. And I was like, oh, cool. Well, who's this guy? And then I looked at all of Chris's stuff and I was like, oh, he, he knows what he's talking about there. <laughs> so that was my first introduction to his content. And then I started doing the logo studies that Chris was posting on his Facebook page at that time. And I figured, well, if he, I had learned that he went to Art Center, he taught at Art Center and I wanted to go there and I never really tried to go. And I figured, well, if this person taught there and now he's giving away all the things that he was going to teach at art center or he did teach at art center for free and i want to get better at logo design why would i not put the time in to learn it so i engaged with his content and i started to post my uh my logo studies and the assignment that he was putting up on facebook i was doing them and then i was posting my work in the comments and i it was back before the days of facebook that you could save a post so I would scroll, I would go back to the page and I would scroll all the way down. And yeah. I was doing this like, like weeks at a time. I probably took three weeks to do one of the assignments because I had client work too. Um, and oh, your, your screen, oh, sorry. Yep. that's okay. Um, and, and so I had client work too. So I was working on this just to, to get better. And then he ended up reaching out to me and asked, why did you, why are you doing this? Like, you don't, you don't need to obviously, yeah. because I was spending a lot of time perfecting what I was doing. And so he's like, you're, I don't even have anything to critique. Like, why are you doing this? And um, so he started asking me questions about my business and what I was struggling with. And then we ended up popping on a random call. Cause he asked, he's like, do you, do you have time for a, a Skype call right now? And I'm like, what? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Okay. I was so freaked out. So we talked and it was like a free coaching session. He just asked me about my business. Um, and that's how it all started. And then he would call me back the next week and he's like, did you do what I told you to do and to, to help grow your business? And I'm like, yeah, I did. And I told him the results and what was going on. And so by, I think the third call, he said, what are your thoughts about being on YouTube? And then asked me, if we could continue, he would offer free coaching and we could continue that as long as I would agree to public publicize it, you know, release it to everybody, my whole world. And, uh, and then he asked, I just asked that you be utterly honest. That's all. And, and that's how it all started. <laughs> I love it. I, I love that. I love just the, the, the kind of like, off the cuff happening of it, of it all, just kind of like, oh, mm -hmm. this is this is how it happened, and and I took a course, and and then he 
called me randomly and that was it. <laughs> I was like, oh, there was no really, there's no premeditation behind any of this. It's just, I want to get oh, better. No. Yeah, I want to get better. And then Chris obviously saw that you were going above and beyond in all of your stuff. I saw some of the earlier, it was about the logo, the logo grading and like creating mm-hmm. logos and stuff like that. Right. So, yeah. Um, and uh, I've, yeah, I've heard you guys talk about it and stuff. So, um, uh, Cam asked a question. And so um, I just yeah. want to start jumping into any questions that we have here, guys. So like, if you guys have questions, please ask them on uh, Facebook Live, I mean, uh, Instagram Live, or you can go to the, the YouTube link that I put in the chat. Um, you can see, you can ask uh, on YouTube as well. Uh, but Cam has some great questions here. Um, one is, uh, what is your focus for the next three months? Gosh, I, I don't even know what my focus is for the next three hours <laughs> with everything that's going on. Uh, well, I guess that's not necessarily true. I probably have the next three weeks. Uh, I'm teaching a brand strategy workshop coming up in mid-April. So that's where my focus is on. And it's an eight-week program. So really for the next three months, that's that's where my focus is. I'm still trying to stay connected to anyone who's subscribed to my email list and who's following me. So still um, still trying to be connected, but really that's my, that's my main focus is teaching right now. Um, and what do you think is maybe the number one tip for businesses right now? And this is something I want to dive into a little bit more, um, on this specific call. Mm -hmm. Um, and just talking about like, what do you feel is one of the, maybe the one or one of the most important things? that businesses can do right now um, at this time, given the, the current situation? Yeah, the, this is so hard. Uh, the one thing that I've been thinking over, because I've been talking to my mastermind group about this, been talking to other friends and, and hearing what they're doing. And the only thing I can really come up with right now is listen, listen to who you serve listen to what their needs are, listen to how they talk about their needs and how you can be of help because a lot of our businesses have changed and some of us need to figure out new and different ways to serve our tribe or our audience or whatever you want to, if they're customers or clients, a lot of needs have changed or our values have switched to something else. And so I would say just use this time to listen because I don't think not too many people have answers. And if they have answers, it's a very short term answer, which is fine because we do have short term needs. But um, if you're playing a long game, I think the best thing you can possibly do is listen to find out what is the true problem and how can I help? So that's, at least that's where I'm starting. I think that's, that's so key as far as like, just that, that one word is so pregnant with, with so much meaning, right? Just listening. Um, and if, if we can do that one thing, then I think that will open up treasure troves of opportunity for us, um, both as designers, brand strategists, um, anybody in our kind of realm and sphere of the creative industry, but also just um, for our clients as well, for them to get, get that one piece of secret sauce and it's really not secret, right? Just listening to your customers. Like, I think there's even taking a step back from, from that and saying, you know, what are you doing to ask your customers and your client base, like what it is they need right now and, and how, how they're doing. And, um, you know, I know everybody's trying to like scramble and save their company right now. Um, I have clients, you know, freaking out and I'm doing calls all the time about just helping them kind of recenter and and really listening to them and just like okay let's take a breath and let's let's really look at what's going on right now um but helping them understand that key to to listen and then to be proactive about asking what their clients need Mm -hmm. um i think that could be a huge game changer even for their business as a whole Mm -hmm. oh definitely definitely i think you bring up a good point that even before listening it's showing up to ask the question of what's going on and then listen. So yeah, I think what you brought up is perfect. And, and I think the worst thing a business or, or a, a person that's self-employed could do right now for their business is to withdraw and isolate and be quiet. 
the worst thing to do is to completely ignore the people that you're supposed to serve. And if you don't, you don't have to have answers. That's the thing. Cause we don't, we don't, most of us don't have answers and we're not going to have answers either if we don't sit and listen to someone. So just show up. So I think you, you bring up such a good point. Just show up and ask that question. Yeah. I think that's, that's the key. Uh, showing up is, is, is number one. Um, self, I think self quarantine and, you know, uh, self or was it social distancing doesn't mean complete, you know, uh, isolation you know and you're not going to your bedroom with like no lights and no doors and like you know just shutting the door behind you it's i think this is the most important time to be any kind of social that you can be right now um and it just so happens that that we have the technology available to us in in a way that we never did before that we can we can pretty much carry on business just like just like never before, right? Like we can, we can continue to conduct meetings, hold, hold interviews. We can continue to hire people if we need to. We can, uh, we can, most businesses can still do their business unless there's a very specialized thing that they need to be like, you know, in contact with people. Like um, I, I do a lot with the food and bev industry and some of my, con- some of my clients and friends are bartenders and bar owners and, and places that, need people in the door to serve them a physical product. Mm -hmm. Um, And we've been brainstorming about like, how can we, how can we sidestep that model and really focus on building community in this time Mm -hmm. and serving the most number one need that is, that is prevalent right now, which Mm -hmm. is connection. Mm -hmm. Like how can we provide connection right now um, Mm -hmm. for, for people who are hurting and, and sad and freaking out and worried, you know, um, but yeah, but listening, I think is that, that, that key element that we forget, you know, we we're trying mm-hmm. to solve problems that we don't know about yet because we actually haven't heard the problems that we're, mm-hmm. we're trying to solve. Um, exactly. Well, I love that you, you brought up the idea of community, which I was just, I'm writing my newsletter right before I, I hopped on with you. And one of the ideas I've been thinking about over the past week or so is how important community is. And that, and cause I heard someone say, well, no one's spending money right now building brands because I mean, with everything that's going on, who's going to have the money to do that. And it made me think, right. Okay. They might not be, cause this might not be an appropriate time to do so. However, it is the perfect time to either initiate or help others initiate building communities. And you know what brands are? They are born out of serving communities. So if you can be on the front lines of building those communities, there will be brands that will come out of that, that can solve and serve that, solve problems and serve that community. So why not be the ones and the leaders that are helping to form those tribes right now? This is the perfect time to do that and to, yeah. to serve people in just the way of giving them the community at first will also solve a need right away. Yeah. I think that, that is the, when you're talking about brand building, like, yeah, nobody has, everybody's scared to spend money right now to, well, I, I'm not going to blanket statement. That's not true. Actually, not everyone is afraid to spend money right now. Um, to build their brand. People, people who see what is coming um, are really concerned about their brand as, you know, as, as what a brand is actually truly identified as, right? What the people say your product or service is, right? That's what a brand is, what the people say it is, not what you say it is. So right now is, is the perfect time to invest in the people who are dictating what your brand is. And I think that is a huge opportunity right now that Mm -hmm. some people are getting and some people are retreating and freaking out about, you know, Mm -hmm. I had a call this morning and this guy's like, he's barely starting it, but he's all in and he wants to see what he can do to build community right now Mm -hmm. to start his brand. And he's not even thinking about starting launching anything for, you know, six months, but um, he's, he's focused on doing the, the hard work, which is the developing his community and, and his social gathering um, right now. Um, and I think now is that, that there's this weird time where everybody's still, 
in the world, everybody is still and everybody is online like never before for more time than ever before. And you have a captive audience almost. So why not go and, and, and build some kind of rapport with them? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that, that's another thing that I was thinking of too, is even if someone is not spending money right now, which there are, like you had said, not everyone is in that mindset, right? And they're ready to serve and build. But even if we think of those that aren't, they're still spending their trust and their time. They are spending those things. And, and so why not, we can still serve them. And, and why does money always have to be the thing that we're working for? All, you know, I understand that we need it to live, but to an extent, if we have enough to get us through today, we have enough to give to someone else too, and to, to be there for them, to help them build community or whatever else that is. So I think it's good for us who do have at least enough to get us through right now to be focused on building that trust and serving people in ways that, that, it, that we can take that lens of the agenda of us just making money off the table for a second so that we can just focus on how can I give and how can I serve the person right in front of me or my clients or whoever that is. Yeah, that's that's kind of a good segue into one of Cam's other questions. Cam's, Cam's are one of two people asking question. If you guys want to answer a question or need a question answered or, or curious about anything that um, just, there's a little question tab on the bottom of Instagram or you can drop it in the YouTube comments, no problem. Um, but um, just hit that hit that button so that we can um, answer see and answer your questions um, a little bit easier. But Kim asked um, how how can we get how can we help people get out of a reactive mindset? What do you think? Oh, how can we help them get out? Gosh, that's like a million dollar question right there. <laughs> I have to think about that, Mario. Do you have any do you have any quick thoughts about that? Uh, my my quick thoughts are. Um, No, no, yes, I do have, I do have, I do have quick <laughs> like, thoughts. Obviously I pause and I'm like, do I have quick thoughts on that? Um, my quick thoughts are um, the easiest way for somebody to get out of a reactive mindset is to provide service or value to someone else because mm. then they're not focused on trying to react to their current situation, but they're really looking to be proactive and helping the needs of someone else that totally takes our focus off of um, what we may fear is crumbling around us. Um, it gives distraction to that, but it also gives focus to providing the needs of someone else who may be in mm -hmm. need, right? Um, mm -hmm. And even if, even if we're not physically able to meet the needs of someone else um, in, in person, because we have to be a bit secluded, right? Um, there are things like this that we can provide value with, right? How can we jump on a call? Um, I, I was on a call with a friend the other day um, and like we live in the same state, um, but we've never had a video call like this ever. And it was really weird, but it was really awesome because we, did, we, we both had a drink and we just talked about stuff and we talked about life and, and it was really great because he needed connection. I knew he needed connection. Um, you know, I, I was down to have a drink. And so like, why not, why not connect that way? And, and, and when we, he has a, he has a business and he had to let go of 20 people the day before. Oh. And so he was not in a good place, but when we got off the call and we were talking about like just some, you know, just things and opportunities. And it was not like I, I, I wasn't coming at this, like as a business branding perspective, I was coming at this as like, hey, you're a friend, let's, let's think of some opportunities that you guys might have right now that you might not think about. Um, and by the end of the call, it was funny, because I'll explain later, but by the end of the call, he was like, his, his mood was totally different. Mm -hmm. he, he had a totally optimistic view. And all I did was, was share some of my talents, which is problem solving and giving him a di totally different perspective because he's not in our space. He doesn't know a lot of the, the things that we do on a daily basis, like building communities and things like that. But to him, that was a focus point. He was like, hey, you know what? I can do that right now. I can gather these people together um, 
that I know and we can build value for people right now. And yeah, you know what? That's going to actually help my business later. But right now it's going to give me a focus to kind of like take my mind off things. Um, yeah. So that's, that is one of the things that I think can get people out of a reactive mindset. Um, I have some other things, but I wanted to hear what you want. Yeah, to. that's beautiful though. And I, and, and when you say that, it makes me think of just leading by example. And I think Mario, you did that with your friend that you, you just showed up and you were there for him and you gave to him first without an agenda behind it, that you, your agenda was really just to be there for him and just to give to him in that moment. And by doing so, he was able to experience that so that now he's able to do that for someone else. So it's as if we're paying it forward and we keep paying it forward. So I think you, you're, you were the living example of what someone should do. Cause we can't tell someone, we can't snap them out of it. We can't yeah. control someone to change. So the only thing we can do is give, give to them and it, it may change them. So. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah. You know, again, going back to what you had said earlier, just like showing up and showing up has many forms, right? Showing up can just be literally showing up and walking alongside somebody as they're kind of in a dark time and you're just there and you may not say anything but you're there and this is this is a dark time for a lot of people right now and, and how can we just show up and be there and be be willing to to be available and that's mm -hmm. it just be available i think for people right now um mm -hmm. that will help them get out of like a knee-jerk reaction mindset i think another another way to get out of a reactive mindset is to focus on being proactive in general right like how can we how can we help people focus on being proactive and that's productivity those are basic business practices things like that 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 we can help um that we can help people do mm -hmm. um uh, so what are let's see let me see let's see jesse i love cam's cam's being my moderator right now i love it cam thank you <laughs> Um, Cam, Cam, you're awesome. Thank you're just you. throwing in some, some questions for everybody. So uh, Jesse Cardiel asks, um, what's your favorite part about what you do? My favorite part about what I do? Oh, man. There's a lot of things I, I like about what I do. I think it's having the connection with creative people like yourself, Mario. So Mario, collab uh, like creative collaborations that I have with other people. So it, it is the connection. It's the community. It's what comes out of the community how, how working with those communities, I see the ripple effect and how it helps other people. And it all starts with conversations like these. And then the ripple effect is insane. So I think just that, the, the connection that I have because of what I do. And then beyond that, it's those, those special moments of the aha moments when I'm talking to someone and, and I ask a question or make some of kind, some kind of connection or they make a connection. And then we both go, Oh my gosh, that was brilliant. Those, those times. I love that. It's just, it's beautiful. And I think we both feel it when, when we discover an idea or we make a connection we never saw before. And then we get to experience that moment together. I love that. That, that, is like some crazy magic happen like mm -hmm. when that when that you guys are discussing when you know where you i met with i literally had two phone calls this morning with guys i had never talked to face to face before who just hit me up randomly and and i knew them kind of but you know one guy I had texted back and forth and um another guy like um he was in he had lived in hawaii and he was very much into one of the brands that i created but then moved back to back East and he somehow kept in contact with me. It was a weird connection, but we had, I had two conversations this morning and, and there were times where they said something and I was able to kind of piggyback off that and give them like, because of what they, what they told me was something that was inspiring that inspired a different thought for them. And I would just kind of push it back to them. And they're just like, just to see their light bulb go on. Like, Oh my God, I never thought of that before. Blah, blah, blah. And like, it's like, yeah, you know, like, like, but it was a, it was a two part thing. It wasn't just my idea. It was definitely this, this collaborative effort. And you don't know, you don't, you have no idea what genius is going to come from mm -hmm. doing calls like this, right? Like just meeting mm -hmm. people and talking to people and, um, and connecting with people and, and offering, offering other, um, 
advice and, and really expertise. Like I have a, I have a varied background and I have 20, almost 25 years of experience in design and whatever else, um, as far as like, um, my professional career and, and you have a very different, varied background and very different expertise specifically right now. And your experience with Chris has changed a lot of that stuff too, and brought you into a different place. Um, so there's nothing but wonderful things that can come from open collaboration and meeting like this. Um, and I think that's one of the, that's probably, that is probably like my favorite thing that has mm -hmm. happened um, within the last few years, as far as like meeting other people online and then just like choosing to push into that relationship mm -hmm. to a point where you're just like, you're co-inspired by, by mm -hmm. one another, right? which is, I think is amazing. Yeah, I think of the the 30 day challenge that I'm doing with Anthony Banks is a really good example of this where we we collaborated on a concept project a few years ago and it went really well. And I, I literally just hit him up and was like, hey, I really like your work. I'd love to jump on a call and see if we can do a concept project together just because I think it'd be fun. So we got on a call. We our creative energies were working together really well. We had some ideas that came out of it. We had a really cool project that came out of it. So then a year later, I hit him up again and I'm like, hey, Anthony, I have this idea of this 30 day challenge I wanna do, would you wanna do it? And, and then this collaboration happened and he brings so much to the table, probably way more than I do in this case. And, but I had the idea and then I go to him with it and then what comes out of it is so beautiful. And it's something that couldn't have been if it weren't for two of us, if not more that come together to make it. And so that's, I love seeing that where I see something that's created that it couldn't have been created by one person. It had to have been a collaborative event to go or be what it is now. So, um, yeah, it's definitely yeah, that's, a good example. Love that. Um, Shane Moran designs my buddy from Ireland asks, how did you balance client work and your own business needs as you moved into strategy? Client work and my own business needs. Um, I, so when I learned strategy, I didn't have clients for four months because I wasn't focused on lead generation and I was solely focused on, I want to learn strategy. I want to learn how to sell it. Didn't really put that much time into actually getting more leads. And so I was dry for clients for four months. So I didn't do a very good job of juggling that at the beginning. Uh, but then I learned, you know, I learned, oh, that I can't sustain myself like this. If this keeps happening, I have to bring in clients. So I had to learn how to network, build my connections, do business development and all that. So um, it was difficult. It was not an easy thing to learn at the beginning, but, um, and then client needs in my, my business. I, I learned after that, that I had to put a lot of time working on my business, if not more than I did in my business on client work. So I used to spend what 95% of my time working in my business on client work. And then during that time, it really taught me that I need to, to flip it and put the majority of my time into my marketing, into networking, into business development and things that are not billable that I couldn't actually bill my client for in order to up-level the clients that I'm getting, solve bigger problems and all that. And so it switched to where I was working on client work, maybe 30% of the time, 70% of the time was all the other stuff that I said, non-billable things. And so when I made that switch, things really started changing for me. So from the, from how much I could charge to the types of clients I was getting to the types of problems I was solving. So the more I was known and out there and trusted, the more people were willing to pay, which then I didn't have to work as much either. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I did, Bonus. you know, I did in a different way. It was non-billable, yeah. but. I think it, it's, it's the non-billable stuff that, that really is what catapults you beyond right because then you you're literally you're you're putting the work behind your business right instead of like trying to trying to you know put your finger in leaks and stuff like that you're actually mm -hmm. building out infrastructure and you're preparing your your job you're preparing your work to your brand your your your, your business to go far beyond where you currently are the more you spend that time 
creating those systems and process procedures and lead generation, like all the stuff that actually will move it forward, you're actually spending time there. And, and it's, it's not tangible in the beginning but it's the most tangible thing that you can do for your business ongoing, right? Yes. Oh, most definitely. And it's a scary leap of faith to want to a person who has spent most of the majority of their time working in client work and in their business, they get very scared to pull their foot off the gas on that portion to switch it. And there is a time, and maybe I needed those four months to give me that break so that I could flip my mindset and also flip where I was putting my time because it would be really hard to take your foot off the brake or off the gas if you have a ton of client work to to do that. And then you're still getting client work in and so then you're still working on it and you're just in this never ending hamster wheel. So if you have a dry time, that's probably the perfect time to go read the e-myth. Actually, I would highly suggest reading the e-myth and, and then flipping where you put your time into more of those, like we had talked about all the non-billable things working on your business um, and using those dry times to do that. Otherwise it's going to be really hard. It's going to be really hard to make that flip. Yeah. I think the, the more you busy yourself with the, the day to day, the, the harder it is to step away Mm -hmm. from, from doing what you feel, which is a, what you feel is what it, the necessity is for your business at the moment, which is, which is the myth, right? It's like, like, look, your, your business actually needs you to work on, on it, not Mm -hmm. in it. So um, I know Chris talks about this all the time. You know, if you can pay somebody, you know, minimum wage to do anything, any part of your business that you're busying yourself with, then you need to do that because um, that is your time is better spent in that upper echelon of that business level Mm -hmm. Um, because you're the, literally the only one that can do that for you. Right. Right. Um, let's let's go to Jeff Glazel asks, thank you, Cam, again, for all these awesome, uh, putting these questions up together. How do you respond to your clients when they don't know what they need and ask for your advice? Ooh, they don't know what they need. I would ask, why are they, why did they even come? Why did they come to me in the first place? So there was something that drove them to come to me, to ask me to even work with me. So uh, I, I would dig in with more questions and I would never, I'm trying to say never, I try, I'm learning to not go in with advice and to, cause when I go in with advice, I go in with so many assumptions. So I am learning how to ask better questions and find out what even drove them to talk to me in the first place. There was something that caused them to call me or get in contact with me. So I want to find the root of that. And what was that? And if I can find that, I'll probably find the problem and what needs to be done. So that's, it's, it's not easy, it's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. Clients, when, when I think that's a, that's a good challenge for um, doing exactly what you help people to do, Melinda. I think a client that doesn't really know what they want is the perfect opportunity to reveal to them that you are not an order taker because if they knew exactly what they want then you're mcdonald's and do Mm -hmm. you want fries with that right or or they're the ones behind the pen and pushing the pixels around right Mm -hmm. so i think it's almost um it's almost a benefit to the designer with a strategy mindset to have a client that is a little less sure about what they want or Mm -hmm. what they need, because that gives us opportunity to speak into that and really give them, pull back the veil and really give them a true understanding of what they may need. You know, Mm -hmm. um, you know, we go to the doctor and we're we're not, we're not saying, Oh, I have, you know, I have an infarct, mild infarction of my, my heart and blah, 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 left ventricle. like, we have no ideas. Like my chest hurts. Right. Mm-hmm. So just like that, as the doctor does tests and asks a ton of questions and does tests and, and, and kind of puts them through the rigor or puts us through the rigor of, of trying to figure out and pinpoint the, the problem. We have a great opportunity when our clients aren't really sure of what they need and what they want, we have an opportunity to to kind of rise to the challenge and and give them a lot more value for than what they were looking for. Mm -hmm. Oh, most definitely. That was a great way to put it. 
I mean, That's, Kim is just amazing. Know, he's just on it. Um, got some UI UX questions. Let's see. Do you do UX research and design skills? Negative. What Negative. tools do you run, do you use to run your agency? What, what tools, like software tools? Uh, what I would, I'm going to, I'm going to take this as a, a general, like, what are some, what are the best tools that you have that help you do what you do? Maybe that's a better question. Hmm. What tools? Well, one, I don't know if this would be under a tool, but the framework that I learned, uh, strategy framework. So I originally learned it from the future. They sell a kit called core. So I originally did there. Uh, another thing that's not necessarily a tool, but something that helps me run what I do um, is the Future Pro Group. So being a part of that is amazing. On a more practical level, I'm rarely in the, the design programs anymore because of doing way more strategy. So I'm in Keynote all the time now, um, in Slack all the time. Those are things that help me do what I do. And then, you know, a large part of where I get all my information too, a lot of books. Now I'm not, um, not really listening to too many podcasts right now, but, uh, reading a lot on psychology, on branding, um, things like that. So I don't know if that totally answered that question, but. I think so. I think we, I'm not a, I'm not a UX UI designer per se either. I mean, I, I do, I have designed UI and I have helped people understand user flow and experience and stuff like that. So, um, but I'm, I'm not going to sit in Figma or sketch all day and like kind of work stuff out. Um, I know what I needed to do. So I'd rather get somebody who is really well versed at, at UI UX, like, you know, like a Jesse show Walter or somebody like that, where I'll call him up and say, Hey, look at this is what we needed to do. Let's work it out. He's the expert there. I'd rather work with experts in their field. Mm -hmm. um, so the greatest, I think the greatest, I don't want to put it this way, but I think the greatest assets I have are my, are my relationships. Mm -hmm. like those mm -hmm. are, those are the greatest relation uh, assets that I have in my business um, mm -hmm. are the relationships that I have and the experts that I know in their field, because I know that they know exactly what I need um, mm -hmm. when I have to do a huge, you know, website or app build out or whatever it is. Um, I know that they're going to have the right answers when I can, when I can tell them, Hey, this is what I need it to do. What are the best ways to do that? You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend my you know 20 hours researching this when I can just call somebody up and say, hey, this is what I need to do. How can we do this? And they'll just know. You know, yeah. so I think some of the best assets that we have are just the relationships that we have. Um, yeah. Tools. You know, you're always gonna have, find a better tool to run your business, and there's the Mondays and the Asanas and the all the trellos and all that stuff which i hate all of them but um, <laughs> i'm necessary, with you <laughs> necessary evil, you know but um so yeah I notion think, notion's pretty cool i do like notion I, I opened it once and i was like this looks like a this looks like a pc and i just hate it um, but <laughs> i know that there's i know there's templates and i know there's stuff but i haven't i haven't really yeah. did yeah i haven't dived into it so I, I really should give it a at least a solid one chance i haven't <laughs> that yet but um yeah i hear i hear notion is pretty cool um my brother uses um drafts a lot for like note taking and things mm. like that it's just another another app but but he's an engineer so everything looks like engineering stuff so <laughs> um there's a there's a question from roxy our friend from the pro group she says <laughs> um melinda can you make the 30-day challenge grow into a 60-day challenge <laughs> <laughs> If you can convince Anthony into it, poor guy, he's, he puts in so much, so much work into those. So, uh, yeah, if you can get Anthony in on that, I'm actually <laughs> thinking about, um, doing 30 day challenges with collaborating with other people as well. Give Anthony a break for now. Um, uh, and, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm in talks with a few other people, but I'm thinking how cool would it be to keep doing this 30 day collaboration with different creatives and who knows, we could all collaborate on something big together. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think uh, awesome. the what I've really enjoyed is just um, I love the illustrations that he's that you're that you're just presenting on your Instagram. But I love going to Anthony's Instagram and seeing like the build of everything, mm -hmm. and that's just like super dynamic, and that's exciting to me to, to watch. Mm -hmm. that. But it's been I've, I've talked to him about it, just like 
great stuff. So amazing stuff. So if you guys haven't seen that, go to Melinda's uh, Instagram. Uh, not right now, obviously, but uh, in a bit. <laughs> um, and, okay, so Jeff also asks, how do you handle drastic changes to product, project scope due to clients trying to handle the current crisis? Ooh, that's interesting. That is a very interesting question. One I probably can't answer. Mario, you might be able to answer this better than I can because I took a break from client work to be able to teach my boot camp. So my current clients are students right now. So yeah. I don't know, Mario, if you have any insight on, on that. Um, I think there was one thing that I had read and I've talked to like Michael Janda about this recently um, because we're, we're both, Michael and I are both like older. So this is my third recession that we're going into. Um, uh, and so what um, the best thing to do right now is to, again, going back to the beginning of this call, listen, okay, what are their actual concerns? What are they actually concerned about? Um, I've already helped a couple of people like work through some of these issues where they were going to cancel the whole thing um, and giving them, giving them a little bit perspective and sharing with them and saying, Hey, look, this is the best time to do this, this, and this. And yeah, we weren't focused. That was probably the last on your list before, but this is the first, this is the best time to do that now. So let's, let's swap a little priorities right now. Let's, Let's give a little bit of perspective to what's going on. Let's not ignore it, but let's acknowledge it, push into it. And, and then let's reprioritize what your goals are right now, because mm -hmm. people's priorities are changing right now. So mm -hmm. how can we give them a little bit of perspective during this time? Again, use, use your greatest asset. If you're, if you're a designer or in the creative field, A, you're creative and B, you're a problem solver. So how can we help them solve what their biggest problem is right now? Um, and, you know, peeling back the layer, you're going to, you're probably going to have to dig a little bit because people are freaked out and they're like, oh, well, we're not selling and we can't sell if people aren't in the store, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, well, how can we reframe that and give them perspective and help them think about business as usual in a completely different way? So if you can give people perspective and an option and an opportunity right now, they're going to jump at it because they need something to focus on that is not their cripple, their, their crumbling business, right? So um, that's what I would do. I know, I know projects, you know, projects can balloon or, or, or deflate out of control fast, but if you can, if you, if your clients are worried about what's going on and, and they're trained, they're changing scope and stuff like that. You have to be a little bit fluid too. You have, this is, this is a worldwide crisis. Let's be a little flexible people. Like let's be a little bit more, you know, um, flexible with our offering, our billing. Um, you know, usually it's 50% down and 25 for 25 for me. It's like right now it's like, Hey, you know what, let's, let's figure out what we can do. And let's, let's kind of, we'll break it into a little bit smaller chunks for you because we're kind of testing waters right now. We don't really know what's going on. So um, that's, that's something that, that I would, I would say just kind of listen again and um, listen and, and help them solve their, their problems and then kind of reprioritize at this time and just, just bring value. I think we can, you have so much more value than you, than you think you do uh, mm -hmm. designer. Um, you do, mm -hmm. you really do. So mm -hmm. um a lot of wisdom that... there. I go back and rewatch just that part right there, Mario. Very it's wise. The, very it's wise. It's the beard. It's the beard. <laughs> um, Design Kick asks, uh, "Hey, Melinda, at what point exactly did your clients see you as a consultant rather than an order taker, and did you make that shift really quick, or was it an afterthought?" I think. Is the... Um, I may have, so. When do they see me as a consultant? When I started doing what Mario just said we should do. <laughs> oh, the whole thing that Mario had just said. When I started doing that, that's when they started seeing me as a consultant. When I when I surfaced things that they didn't know themselves, that they it's like they knew, but they didn't know how to articulate it or they didn't know what the real problem was. And when I helped them see that through question, through the questions that I asked. That's when I started being seen as more of the consultant, which happened during the time that I learned how to be a strategist because a strategist has to ask all those questions because they don't have the answers. They need, as a facilitator too, you need 
to know that the answers lie in the person you're talking to that you don't really, you come empty. And so that transition of me becoming a strategist and consultant, it all kind of happened at the same time. And it took me about six months to feel more confident. I wouldn't say hundred percent, but more confident in it enough to, to position myself as that, as well as the clients actually seeing me more as a consultant. And it was something I grew into and I'm still growing in it as well. But, um, I would say it was about six months of learning of working with people from the pro group on how to actually do this, of working with my coach and, and all of that. And of course it, still, I'm still working on it, but, um, yeah, it was, it was a good handful of months. Now, is that, um, you said it, you took four months to kind of dig down into strategy, right? Mm -hmm. Is that six months from when you started actually practicing, practicing strategy? So we're talking about like a 10 month kind of turnaround from really doing regular client work to learning strategy and then six months actually practicing? Is it six months from when you started learning strategy? So the, those four months of no clients actually was overlapped when I was learning strategy. I, um, so I started learning it, let's say, I think it was like a September of that year. And right away within the first month, I, uh, I found five people to do it for free for. And so that was part of my six months of really learning and getting my bearings. Um, and it was four months from the time I started learning it to the time that I charged for it. And I, I only charged a thousand dollars for the first one. And that even included some design work in it too. And then, um, I want to say it was six months from learning it. So from that September six months till I sold it separately for $5,000. So until I felt confident to sell it separately minus design. Um, so that, that was kind of the timetable and there was another client in there that was 2,500. So I was stair stepping my way up to 5,000, um, with no design. Um, awesome. So, yeah, so like it takes some time guys. So like, you know, put the time in and, 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 and really know your craft, like learn it. And then you can't really know it until you actually start practicing it. Right. Like you, you need to like work on it and practice it. And like just reading something doesn't make you, you know, really well adversed, well versed at it. Um, so take your time, practice. And then also, I think um, you had mentioned this before um, Melinda on a, on a different call, but um, you, I think when you started practicing strategy, actually practicing um you had a you had a like a group of people that were kind of practicing together right how how was that how instrumental was that in like helping you oh my gosh that was so needed i don't think i would be able to charge that quickly if i didn't have that group i know i wouldn't have been able to charge that quickly and feel that confident in it so i had a group of about i want to say there were six of us and then i had another friend too that i met with separately from the pro group we met every week for hours. So I would say between two and four hours, we met together and we ran strategy on each other's businesses at, during our call. But then we would also go away, go work with our free clients that we were practicing this out with, or some of us had paid clients during that time. We'd come back to the group and say, hey, this is what happened during my client call or my client meeting. This is what I learned. This is how I changed the framework. It might work for you. So we were working with clients, coming back to the group and sharing, working with each other. And I, there were so, there were so many questions I had at the beginning that I couldn't just go to Chris for, cause then it just, he didn't have the time for that anyway. And I didn't, it would be the Socratic, you know, 10 hour later, we'd figure it out. Uh, so there was this, I needed peers. I needed peers who were either a couple steps ahead of me or learning with me. And, oh my gosh, that was so, so instrumental. I don't think I could be where I am today if I, if I didn't have them. Um, yeah, I think we underestimate the value of, again, collaboration, cooperation, and really just bouncing ideas off of peers. Like, mm -hmm. I, I can't emphasize how really important that is for your career, not even just learning one or two things, but like, if you can, if you can learn to collaborate and um, cooperate with other people that are doing the same thing you're doing, it could be in the same city, state, 
it's definitely going to be in the world, obviously, right? So you guys bring different perspectives and different things to the table. Again, um, it's just going to make you better. It just makes you better continuously. So um, that if you're learning anything right now, get a couple of people that are learning the same thing and and collaborate and cooperate. Those are those are some really great tips um, there that I wanted to make sure that she was able to tell you guys because um, it doesn't just happen, right? Like we don't just read something and we start doing it and it's perfect. Um, you know, even if we do have you know amazing mentors like Chris or um, you know Mike Jenda or other people that are really um, prolific in the space, um, you don't have that 24 seven access to them, A and B, they're so far removed from where you are right now that it's hard for them to get kind of in that beginner mind space again. Um, Melinda kind of, she talked about like, you know, the 10 hour Socratic, you know, methodology that Chris would actually have to take her through in order for her to come to the come to the conclusion that that Chris needed her to come to. Um, so um, our Instagram just went went down, but because um, we I think we went long, but um, the you know, that that whole thing, just like it takes time, you know, so if you can find other people that are going through it with you, um, that is the best way. But mm -hmm. Melinda, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been awesome chatting with you. Super fun. Um, yeah. And I'm sad we couldn't see each other at, at Creative South um, in a few weeks, but um, we get to see each other like this. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is awesome. This is awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you thank so you. much, Mario. And you shared so much wisdom too. I want to go back and grab all that. <laughs> um, yeah. And then if you could send me that link and how to like download this thing, cause that would be I awesome. Will. And then I can send that to you. Um, also send me whatever you want people to link to um, okay. or, or links and stuff like that. Just send me in a chat and I can throw that under the YouTube stuff and well, yeah. that's it. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, thanks guys for holding with us for about an hour, I guess. It just kind of, it kind of just flew by, which, which is awesome. Yeah. So uh, this is Melinda Livesey. I am Mario. This is, uh, we're calling this getting made because we're just, we're making stuff and we just want to help people, other, other people make cool stuff too. So, um, and uh, we will talk to you later. I'm in Hawaii. So I'm going to say aloha everybody and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. See ya. All right. Recording's over. I'll see you later. Thank you, Melinda. Yeah. Thanks Mario. Talk bye. to you later. Okay. Bye.